morning. Welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to talk for a little bit about eyes. Eyes for your dolls. This doll has eyes that I made specifically for her. You see? Her head is sculpted from um, Living Doll, and her ears are new clay that's out called um, Cosplay. And you can see the ears are very, very flexible. And I sculpted the doll with a hole in the side of the head, the ears inserted into it, and then they baked. Um, you can use TLS to permanently bond them in, or you can glue them in place afterwards, which is what I did with these. But that, oops, there we go. That is what we're gonna talk about today. Okay, so let's get to it. What we're gonna use to start with is pre-printed eyes. You may have seen tutorials like this before, and this is going to be pretty similar with a few changes. I'm just going to show you how I make them. So what I do first is I cut out, I cut out the little eyes. They're pretty small, but I actually use the bigger size that I print so that you'd be able to see it on the video. And I use, um, glass cabochons and we're going to go to that part of the video now. How these are made, um, you start with a pair of cabochons and I had cut out a second pair of these lenses and I seem to have misplaced them. I may have even, yep, I did, I knocked them on the floor. Probably when I was wiping the counter off because they were upside down, I think. Well, I'll find the other one when I find it. Anyway, so you want to pick two that are cut out the same, look generally the same, and make sure that your, um, <clears throat> your pupil is the color that you want it and that it's dark enough won't get a second chance, or I should say a third chance to make it darker. So <clears throat> if you printed it and the pupil didn't print dark enough, now would be the time. Just take the tiniest bit of paint and I don't see up close that well, so I'm going to put my other glasses on. Okay, I'm trying not to get my head in the way, but I have to get close to see. I'm just going to add some more pigment. Okay, so when you print on plain paper, you're going to find that the um, damage is pretty dull, but it plays nicely. Uh, everywhere except the iris itself or the pupil rather itself so I usually take um, a gloss paint like this folk art licorice which is um, it's a sh has a nice shine to it and I go ahead and I paint the iris on the paper just to make it darker um, and the only reason I use the shine one is because of the ones I have right now. It has the highest pigmentation. Now you can just brush little sweeps, soft little sweeps into the, um, the iris because the eye or the pupil if you look at a real close-up of the human eye, it's not actually perfectly round. It has 
it has little spots where it, it veers off into the, uh, the colored area. So when it's perfectly, perfectly round, it kind of looks funny if you look at it up close. Anyway, this is what I do with the paper that's not shiny, that doesn't usually um, There we go. Turn the autofocus back on. There we go. That looks pretty good. So, <clears throat> all right, now we're going to let that dry now that I have pupil, it's a little much, a little too much paint, unstick it, okay, all right, and we take this teeny weeny palette away. And before you go back to claying again, be sure that you wash that paint off your hands. If you got it on your fingers like I just did. So I usually take a little bit of rubbing alcohol. And let's bring you back up here. A little bit of rubbing alcohol. On a paper towel and just... All that paint back off my fingers. And that's just acrylic paint, but it does have a tendency to not come off completely. The pigment can soak into your skin, but as you can see, the rubbing alcohol gets it off entirely. Okay, so we're going to let those dry a scoop. Got to brought them over. Oh, I did. We're going to use UV resin like this. And another little paintbrush. Now, I recommend that you dedicate some paintbrushes to moving your resin around and be aware that if they're exposed to sunlight, they will not only gum up, they will harden up. So, Be aware of that. Okay. And since I have such a lovely sunny day here, I'm going to have to do this quickly, or otherwise, I'm going to have to find myself something to create some shade. There we go. That'll work. I think you can still see. There we go. A little overhead light on. Make sure they're dry. They appear to be. Okay, so we're going to want a little drop of resin. Get your lid back on. Don't let your bottle get exposed to the sun. It will ruin it. Okay, so take your cabochon. Make sure that the underside is clean. Just give it a little wipe. Okay, where's my camera? There we go. And then load your resin and coat one side of the cabochon, the flat side I should say, not one side. Coat the flat side with the resin. And then take your lens and slide it on. Okay. You're going to see it's going to slowly soak into the um, the paper. You want to make sure that it's centered. 
one of the good things about putting a little acrylic paint on it makes it a lot easier to make sure that it's centered because if it's off there is no fixing that okay and then repeat for the other eye and I actually usually cut the paper a teensy bit smaller than the um, let me show you a little teensy bit smaller than the cabochon now I know that there is a method where um, like with some of these where I left the paper bigger and I, I will do that when I'm using um, photo paper. You can see this is a shiny backed photo paper. But when I'm using just plain paper, which is what these are printed on, which is what I used to print them on, and I'm trying to mimic the original eyes, which the doll was, um, she was quite a few years old. Since I'm using plain photo paper on this, I'm going to have a dollar less reflective eye. Okay, make sure you use enough so that that's shiny all the way around. There's no dry spots. Okay. <clears throat> Oops, I see a dry spot. Add a little more. Okay. Is that a speck of dirt? Hold on. Yep, little speck of dirt. All right, get that out of there. Grab my lens, touch it on, slide it over. Now the reason we're using the UV gel is because if you don't use the UV gel when you're baking, you're going to get this little air gap that's going to appear under the lens and I found that out a long time ago and it makes your eyes look cloudy not what you want okay that's a nice eye okay so we're gonna leave those to set and um, once it's in the doll you can um, coat the entire exterior of the eye with the um, the UV gel if you like and then I usually cure this really quickly with my there it is my little UV flashlight Here, what was on my paper as well if only because this stuff smells pretty bad unless it's cured and then the smell goes away but yeah it's all cured almost I will run these through my um, my nail oven the UV light oven but that should be cured enough that I can pick them up and show you. There we go. So that was that. Pop these in the oven and get back to play. Well, wash my hands first. So now that that is done, I am going to go ahead and use these. They have the, the original blue-green that the other eyes have. These now that they're on are definitely too green not enough blue so here we have the clay that the eyeball itself will be made of and there are a number of different methods for making the eye itself there are a bunch of tools on the market um, there are this type which I use that were made for doing the balls on a ball joint doll 
this is a I believe it's called a dapping tool and it, it allows me to make a ton of different sizes of eyes and I usually cure them right in this I press the clay and I cure it then I take the eye and I sand it down on a piece of uh, sandpaper and get my flat surface but for today I think I'm going to use See if I can find it. 16 for 18. Yeah, I think I'm looking at an 18. Okay. Now this is very, very firm. This is Fimo. Um, <clears throat> Femo white and Femo transparent. Okay, so you want to make sure that this is clean because the white clay is not forgiving and not that you can't paint it, but why paint it if you don't have to? Now, as a release, you can use cornstarch. To make sure it pops back out or you can just use water and I am just going to use some water. And I'm going to utilize this since it's sitting here as a place to just put some water and get it inside of the tool. Okay, tap it back out. My little ball here. Make sure it's semi soft. And then press this down until I hit the table. And it'll just keep pushing clay out until I get to the table. table. Grab another piece. Yeah, I just didn't condition that enough. Let's Try again with a smaller ball and try to make that ball a little smoother before it goes in. See what happens this time. just to about the size of that eye so that when I put it on and press it in it does not deform the eye too much okay. and you really can only do this with Fimo because most of the other clay is just too soft you'd have to put these in the fridge and let them firm up so that you don't lose your um, your shape. And this piece I'm tr bit I'm trimming off. You can do that. 
once it's baked even and then you can sand it and you know really hone that shape more now normally a human eyeball the pupil is way smaller than um, the ones that I'm going to be using but she's not human so this is not going to be perfectly scaled okay so you can see what pre-cutting that um, has done okay now here I'm going to stick this one on, push it down a little. You also want to make sure you're in the center of that eyeball as much as possible. I mean, if you wanted to have the eye looking to the side, you could shave, and I've done this too, you can shave the side instead of the top oh. oh still a hair sticky let me grab another one I have a bunch I've made ahead of time and then when you stick this one, you get the uh, the benefit of. Let's see, the eye will be looking to the side. Let's see. So your eye will look to the side, even though it's not a full eye. And you want to push that in just a little bit. And then when you glaze the whole eye, you'll shorten how much that sticks out because you're going to coat the whole eye in your UV gel and that extra bit where it sticks up will disappear so that's one way to to do it to where the eye and obviously if there's any place where the eye doesn't come up like you can see I set this off center a little you can come now with your fingers and are we in focus there we go with your fingers and um, press that clay so that it goes over to the eyeball and you can always pry off the lens and reposition it too if need be there we go so it's good and stuck and then do the underside which would be easier to camouflage but be careful not to misshape the eye around it you want it to still be round And that UV gel will hide. There we go. So that is going to be set in flush, but have that where it looks like it's looking to the side or looking up. And that was just by slicing off the side of the eye instead of doing it dead center the way these are. So these will go in the oven. So if your eye has gotten dirty, grab yourself an alcohol wipe and and if it has any chunks on it, you can deal with them. 
and just keep turning the white so that it's always a clean part touching the eyeball as you go around until you get it where it's clean of any dust that picked up okay and then turn it over completely use the opposite side to do the other side some dirt's going to be more stubborn than other dirt so just keep looking at not just the eye but the piece of uh, alcohol swab you're using and if you have a really stubborn piece like that little hair right there assume that it's more than you think get a tool and pull it out because it's probably deeper than you think it is and just keep wiping and wiping try not to get the alcohol on the lens if you can help it only because the alcohol and the UV resin are not really friends won't destroy it or anything but it's better to not get it on there okay so now the white clay is nice and white again and I'm gonna try that baking again okay so here we are again they're out of the oven and I went ahead and I set this one up and finished it so that I could show you the difference between the finished eye and the eye that I haven't gone and added um, additional clay around the lens now you can see on this eye how the transition from the lens to the eye is nice and smooth and round but this one it's pretty sharp see how you can see almost under the lens because of the way it's shaped which if you catch that in the profile of the doll is going to look pretty strange so how I fix that <clears throat> is I take some clay just a little bit it doesn't need doesn't need a lot okay and just give it a couple of little squishes to condition it roll it out into a long super skinny snake it doesn't take a lot to do this and fix the problem and then and this might even be too much so we'll see if it's too much I'll cut some away and I take that super skinny snake without any other preparation I wrap it around the lens and press it in so that it stays Trying to make sure I'm not dislodging my um, lens from the clay. Okay, cut that piece and remove it. Bring this one around. Get it lined up. Get the extra piece off. This part's pretty straightforward. Okay, now. I'm going to take my tool and holding it at an angle, I'm just going to run it around, run it around the eye, and just kind of press that in. Try to do it even. You don't want to do what I just did there where you get that little divot. Just run it around. And you're going to see it's going to want to raise up because you're going to have more clay than you need. You just want to kind of fill in that gap anywhere there is a gap and when you come back around again just take and chop off that little bit of surplus okay and then you can grab a q-tip and some rubbing alcohol now the eyeball itself is already baked so this is this is extra clay that we're adding on top of that 
You don't want it sopping wet, but you want it wet enough that it softens that clay that you just added. And you're just wiping it and then rub with your finger. And you're going to create kind of a slurry that's going to help you to smooth and spread and round that clay that you just added into the rest of the eye. You really shouldn't need <clears throat> shouldn't need a tool to do this because the rubbing alcohol is going to make the clay really soft. Okay, wipe that extra off the lens. Okay, and then now come with the tool. Now, if it's dirty, if your Q-tip is dirty, get rid of it. Because you will pick up dirt you didn't even see was there. Get another one. Okay. And again, you're pushing this clay so that it works itself and creates a bevel and it should pretty much disappear into the rest of the eye and if it doesn't it's probably because you didn't use quite enough clay and if it's fighting you you can add a little more clay a little more rubbing alcohol now you're going to glaze this later this is going to leave a, a matte like texture. It's going to pick up the detail from your skin, so you're going to get this ridge from doing this. Just keep pushing it down, pressing and dragging and smearing it into the rest of the eyeball. It's going to leave just the upper part of that cabochon exposed and then when you look at <clears throat> look at the profile of the eye you just see the lens okay then take your swab again go around try to make sure you have an even line and just keep going and clean it up let's make sure we're in focus Okay. Okay. Pretty good. I can still see right there where it's You can still see where I added the clay. And you want that line to disappear. There we go. That looks better. Okay, and now to uh, cure this new clay, all you have to do is hit it with the heat gun because there's not very much clay there to cure. And then we can put them in the doll. And if you, um, if you like the video, please give it a like means a lot to us as creators to know if you enjoyed the content and if you want to see more content like this give um, a little click on the button down there to subscribe to the channel and YouTube should let you know when I have new content up. Thanks for stopping by. Have a good day.